about Italian food as the best food to eat during economic hard times. Can you explain to me a little bit more about it? Well, I was very grateful that the Italian Trade Commission asked me to do this because they understand the role of promoting food, not just in terms of selling, but that it's a culture and that you can sell a product once, but you sell the idea of belonging to a culture for a lifetime. I would say to you that Italian food is great not just during economic hard times, but also when we're all very rich. The point is, it's about quality of life. And quality of life does not relate to having a lot of money. And people who think that they're good when they're rich or have money are not good. We have to be, I love the expression, there's an Italian mineral water called Ulivetto, and their, their slogan is belly dentro, belly forty. If you're beautiful inside, then you'll be beautiful outside. And I believe that. And to be beautiful inside means connecting to a certain kind of spirit and tradition and finding beauty in small things. So if I eat a perfect onion, it means I have to kiss someone who's just eaten a perfect onion because no one else will kiss me. But the idea is that a perfect onion is a work of art. And Italy has always understood agriculture and understood seasonality and understood flavor in ways that other countries are just beginning to understand. The French, the Spanish certainly get it to some degree. The Americans on certain things, we also get it to some degree. And most countries do, but Italy is the professional and everybody else are the amateurs in that. And so if we think that we're good because we bought a sun-dried tomato or a truffle, that's not what makes us good. We're good if we can experience pleasure in every little thing. And that's Italian eating. So a strand of pasta is a perfect piece of technology, spaghetti, because it twirls, it gathers things in it, you get enough nutrition from it, it tastes great in the mouth. If you're eating it with someone else, it ends in a kiss. It's just the perfect food. And a piece of Parmigiano Reggiano or any Italian cheese, rather than putting it in your mouth, chomping on it and swallowing it, savor it. The key thing in Italian cuisine is the ability to savor foods and keep it in your mouth. You let it melt, you experience it as different flavors come forth, and then you swallow it, and then you don't immediately eat the next thing. You have the afterglow of the food that you've just eaten, and then you have another piece of something. So you can eat less, but eat it really well. Without doubt, the quality of the ingredients that the Italians presented was the highest by far of any nation. And I was very impressed and very pleased with that as an honorary Italian to see that this continues. But I also said to him, and I really meant this in, a, in an affectionate way, that the Italians often don't do very much to promote their products because the products are so good that they feel, okay, we've created this, let it sell itself. Mm -hmm. And there were certain people who were pouring and tasting and so on, but many of the Italians sat around with platters of cheese sitting there. And if you walked by and took a piece of delicious cheese and then you kept going, they never said, let me tell you about my cheese. Mm -hmm. And here we have a work of art on a plate and they didn't explain it. So to most people, it was just another piece of cheese, not something with a history behind it and great passion and love in how it was created. So I feel about this about Italians everywhere, that they're justifiably proud of what they've created, and the level is not matched by anyone in the world. But it needs to be explained and taught properly, and that doesn't always happen. That's something I do for Italy, and I'm proud to do that. But every Italian should do that. There was a lot of discussion about the economic downturn. But I'm old enough, I'm 53, to remember other economic downturns, and I read about the Depression, and I, my parents lived through that. And like it or not, the economy will always go up and then always go down, and always go up and always go down. And if we lament when it goes down, we're not recognizing a reality that it does go down, 
and eventually it will go up. This time it's worse than the others because I believe the series of circumstances before the current presidential administration produced a catastrophe. But we're now trying to fix it, and it's going to take a while. But in the meantime, we just have to still sell our products. We still have to understand that these things give us nutrition, which gives us health. It gives us pleasure, which gives us serenity. And these things are all important when we're dealing with very bad times. That everything has somewhere-ness. In Italian food, there are very few national foods. Everything is local and regional, which is magnificent. Historic, in that it's built on ancient traditions of agriculture, of approaches to cooking, and on a sense of belonging to a tradition. And third, clean. That sounds like a strange word, but when you look at products, most of the world, they have additives, they have colorings, they have all kinds of junk in them that are bad for the health. Most Italian food products, even now, are remarkably clean and safe. And so in addition to tasting great, they taste pure in the mouth. I can tell the difference. I don't like eating products that are filled with colorings and additives and stabilizers and gums. I'd rather just have plain yogurt than have a yogurt that has all kinds of additives that change the, the sensation of the yogurt. Basic foods, if treated properly and with respect, can give more pleasure than any dip or salsa or anything that many of the other countries were showing. For whatever reason, there's a passion among a certain kind of American who will learn the Italian language, who will study the history, study the geography, do all of that work to then find these products and try to save them, because often the Italians don't recognize the patrimony, the patrimonio that they have.